So this is going to be a super quick one this time. Um, we left it last time with uh, our sprite class was fully bound to Lua and we had a little script down here. And where is it? Down here, here's our script. Uh, and it all looks really nice. We can uh, make our sprite call functions on it and we can set public values on it and we can read public values on it. But we left it with the maybe slight drawback, depending on how you look at it, that what happens if somebody wants to set a value on this object, this uh, well, this user datum that doesn't uh, that we didn't define. So if I want to set this, uh, let's call it zzz. If I want to set this zzz to ninety nine, um, let's just see what happens. Let's build that and let's run it, and we get an assertion because uh, line nine two nine. Let's have a look at what that assertion is. 929. There we go. We asserted because we just said, ah, I don't want you to write to the native object. So what actually happened was when we tried to write that value, because our object is a, is a user datum, user datums don't have any like fields of their own. So they always go to the, by default, to the new index because new index gets called. Um, and new index is this thing down here, new index. That always gets called if there's nothing there, so it tries to assign it. And in our case, we have actually written one, and we have handled it. We've picked out all the values, the index that we're accessing, the value we want to push on, and we've said, okay, if this thing is X, we're going to write it to our native object. If it's Y, we're going to write it to our native object. And if it's not, we're going to assert because we don't know what to do. Um, but we could actually allow the scripter to write that value to somewhere in the object, and then we could let them retrieve it later. So this would actually extend the native sprite that only has an X and Y value and allow them to put a Z value on it or whatever they want. Um, so to do that, um, really, the most sensible way you'd think about doing it is let's just put all these other values in some table somewhere. Um, and then we can retrieve the values from the table um, when someone calls index. So at the other end, when someone calls index here, we could pull that value out of the table. But luckily, um, Lou has already got a way of kind of kind of handling this it is it is actually a table but they've just got a, a formalized way of storing the table so it's easier to get at so in the create sprite function this is where the 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 user data is actually or the user data has been actually created we're going to create one of these tables that we're going to attach to it so if we do lure new table so that's going to be the table where we store any stuff for this object that we, you know that that the script to wanted to store and we don't know about natively we're going to we're going to Put it into this table and we do something this is a new thing um, uh, set user value um, and what that wants is the index of the uh, user datum that it's going to set it for so that's the first thing is it let's have a look yes yeah, so the first thing in this stack i'm going to call it i'm going to index it from one is the user datum that i want to set this table to so that's going to, it's going to take the, the, pop this thing off the top of the stack and set it onto that user data. So, and it's just a table. I think the reference manual says it can only be a table or nil. So basically it's either a table or you're removing a table. So in this case, we've just basically associated a table with our user data. So that's going to be where we're going to store our stuff. So when new index happens now, if we go down to new index, um, so we've gone in, we've checked to see if it's our X and Y, and if so, we're pulling it out of the native data. But otherwise, instead of asserting, what we can do is say, uh, Lua get user value. And what that'll do, uh, we have to give it the index of the user data that's associated, which I'm gonna index these from, that's from one, that's from two, and that's from three. So that's the user data, the index that we were trying to set, sorry, the, the, the key that we were trying to set, and that's the value we were trying to set. So yeah, it is like the user data and the index and the value. So I'm gonna index them like this because it's gonna make it a bit easier for me. Um, so I'm gonna get the user value for one, which is the user data. So that's gonna get that table that we created every time we created one of these. And it's gonna be specific to this user data. Uh, and it's gonna push it onto the stack. So that's just a table, remember. So uh, we know how to access tables already. 
this is Lua's great way of just reusing everything everywhere. So again, we've got a new feature, but it's just tables. Uh, we need the key to access it with or the index and that's already on the stack at two. So let's just push it on again there. And we need the value that we need to access. So that's already on the stack at one, uh, sorry, at three. Um, so basically all we've ended up here with is table. Uh, I'm just gonna give these numbers here to make it clear. Table, index and value. And then we can just do set table, which is we've called this loads of times before. And it, we can, we need to set the table, which is minus one, minus two, minus three. Set the table minus three, and that's going to do one, two equals three. And we don't want to set anymore because now we can write to the native object. So, so that handles the new index case. So we, when we create the sprite, we make the user value, which is just a table. When we when new index gets called, which is when somebody wants to write something and it wasn't there already, then in any case that we couldn't handle, we're going to write to it. So the only other thing we've got to do then is when someone tries to read that value, we've got to handle that too. So uh, when they, we, we come in here and we know the user data and the index they wanted to access, uh, and we look up, if we, if we find out that it's X, we're going to pull the X value out. If it's Y, we're going to pull the native Y value out. And in any other case, we, we read from our table that we stored all our uh, methods in. So now we've got to kind of do two things here. So we, we're going to do something similar to what we did before. Uh, so we're going to get the user value again, uh, which is at one on the stack. So I'm going to index them from like one and two again. I think it's just a bit easier in this case. Remember, Lua lets you do them as going from the bottom as negative or going from the top as negative and going from the bottom as positive, if that makes any sense. But remember, it's just the same way of accessing the stack. So we get the user value and we want to get we want to get the value, the index that we want to access, which is at two. And we just do get table on that. Get table. And the table's at negative one, negative two. So we get the value out of that user uh, user table. Now here's the thing, there's a there's a chance that this value isn't actually in this table because it, it might be one of our methods that we're calling. Like it might be one of the methods we were looking for in Sprite. So we need to check to see if Lua has actually left anything on the stack for us. And if and if it hasn't, then we, we need to go back to the, the Sprite table that's got all our functions in. And we can do that with uh, just checking to see if um, it's nil. Because Lua will leave us a nil on the stack if that value didn't exist. So nil is just Lua's like null type if you're in uh, if you're in C++. So it will leave us if that value didn't exist, it's going to leave us a nil there. So if the value is nil, that means there's nothing in the user table for this thing we're accessing. And then we should go and look in the function table instead. And this kind of works out because if there was something there uh, that's not nil, then it leaves it on the stack and we just say we return one. And if there isn't, then we'll look it up in our sprite table. And then uh, we're assuming here that, that it's going to be there. And then we're going to return one as well. We could do the same thing down there and say, oh, if it's nil there, we could assert or something. But we haven't done any kind of error checking like that. But essentially, that should should be it. So we, we create the user table. We create the table, the user value, when we make the sprite. Uh, when we are... Um, setting this value that doesn't exist we set the value in that table and when we're getting the value uh, we have to get the value out of the table and if it's not there we're going to default to our other table that's got all our functions in um, but this should mean that we we allow the um, object to have uh, to be able to store things that didn't exist before and if we run this uh, well nothing's crashed but um, down here it's just still printing out the same thing but we, we should be able to see the results of that. So we did actually set ZZZ to 99, but we had no way of knowing if that worked. Um, we are printing out, we're getting that 10 pecs down below from last time. So what I'll do is I'll just set Sprite, I'll set, no, I'll set Sprite X to be Sprite ZZZ. So that'll then test that we can write the ZZZ and we can read the ZZZ. We're gonna set it to the X and the X is then gonna to set to 10 pecs. And then down here, 
we read tempex out after the script's finished and I think I said it's in 99 so let's just try that out um, let's run that and there you go so we set the X to 99 so that means we successfully stored a value um, in this uh, user data that didn't exist on the native object so now this is this is great the script now has more functionality than than the original native object it can call all the functions it has access to all the public member variables it can be constructed and destructed and it can store values that didn't even exist on the native object and hand them around to other people you could even put functions on there and, and other stuff so that is really powerful and and you can see where like lua scripting is really coming into its own then because you, you've really got some You've, you've got your script doing everything the native thing can do and then now you've even got it doing some more so i think that's really cool and it's not too hard to do the user values aren't really mentioned a lot in the um in the documentation but they are a thing and you, you could do it another way you could create your own table and store it somehow but it's just providing an easy way of doing that for you so i think that's all good so hope that helps uh next time probably take a step back from this um uh, object oriented stuff for a while. I'll just do a quick video on how to use the allocation function and uh, so you can have your own memory allocator or whatever. And uh, we'll have a look at that next time. That should be quite easy.